Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. Now if you're new to my channel, I do one of these every Sunday and I tend to focus on nano species, but it can be any freshwater fish, invertebrate, plant, etc. that I find interesting. Today we're going to talk about the German blue ram, Microgeophagus ramirezi. And they are a fish that I don't often keep for a few reasons. One is that they like their water warm, and I don't heat my tanks, I heat my fish room, and to make things warm enough for them can be a bit of a challenge. The other reason is, is they're not always particularly long-lived, and there's a lot of fragile strains in the hobby from years and years of line breeding. I tend to prefer fish that are of a wild type. Um, and wild rams can be a bit picky on water parameters, definitely picky on foods, and challenging to keep overall. That being said, a friend of mine that is a local breeder needed to get rid of a ton of his rams, so I took them and I'm working with them, and we're going to talk about them today. So let's get started. Right now I have four tanks of these absolutely beautiful fish of all sizes, from fry to adult breedable size. The ones here in the front are more like your teenagers. You can see some, oop, there's a big male. You can see some that are definitely of breeding size, and at some point soon, I'll move them into their own tank in order to pull another spawn. But in a moment, I'll show you a bunch of their fry, which is why I'm not doing it right now. Now, the German Blue Ram is an absolutely stunning dwarf cichlid that comes from the Orinoco system in Venezuela. There are year-round high temperatures in that area, meaning these guys really need temperatures of at least 80 with slightly warmer being ideal. Or in Celsius, that'd be around 30 degrees. They like soft water with a low pH, but it also has to be extremely clean and very dilute. Because of these sort of picky requirements, they can be a bit challenging to the beginner aquarist. At home, you would want to set them up with sort of a soft substrate, probably sand is best, or very fine gravel. As in the wild, they actually sift through the sand in order to find particles of food that they eat. In the aquarium, they're really easy to feed, readily taking any frozen or live food, and even a lot of the dried foods. Now, as I mentioned in my intro, these guys are an extremely popular fish that are being farmed exceptionally readily all over the world which has led to them becoming a bit fragile as well as some really unique aquarium strains including different color forms, electric, yellow, and different body forms including balloon form which I am not a supporter of. They are stunning, interactive, but can be challenging to breed because the parents are biparental substrate spawners meaning they pick a flat spot in the aquarium where they lay their eggs and both parents take turns rearing them. Now, they often are known at, to eat their own spawns um, and it can take quite a few tries before the male and the female get it right. Because of that, it's best to pool the eggs if you want to rear them up. I like to siphon them out with a siphon tube into a small cycled aquarium, which makes it easier to keep it clean. Now, sexing these guys can be a bit of a challenge. When they're in breeding dress, like some of the larger ones in this aquarium, you can see that the males have substantially longer finage and a lot more color. In some of the different strains, the females will get a pink belly, but that is not always the case in the line bred forms. Now, while these guys are obviously strikingly beautiful, this is a quarantine tank. It's bare. It's got very few plants, so you can only imagine how colorful they would get if set up in a proper environment. You can see in the back there the female with that pink belly and a male in the foreground. That is the dominant male on the right there, and he is just all fired up and looking for love. Now, when you breed these guys, They don't require any sort of special conditioning, just really good quality food as well as very, very clean water. Even in this quarantine tank, I am doing extremely frequent large volume water changes and this temperature is kept at about 82 degrees. Now, trying to breed them, a species tank is probably best. However, if you want a more interactive fish, you can add some peaceful tetras, which tends to make them a little less shy. 
These rummy nose are doing an excellent job, but you could easily use something smaller like embers or even Endler's live bears are a good choice. They also do quite well with various peaceful plecos and Coriodorus catfish. Really the, the determining factor is the temperature that these guys require. So you'd want to choose tank mates based around their needs and not vice versa. Let's take a look at the fry and I'll tell you a little more about rearing those. These guys have huge spawns. It is not at all uncommon for them to lay upwards of 200 eggs. And that's about how many fry I have here. They lay their eggs on flat surfaces in the aquarium. Rocks really are probably your best bet, though horizontal surfaces of driftwood can also work. Leaf litter is also really useful in a ram tank and they'll utilize that surface as well for spawning. Now these fry are several weeks old at this point, but when they lay the eggs, they lay them in big clusters on those flat surfaces and the eggs take about two to three days to hatch. After about five days, the fry become free swimming and at that point you need to feed them. I like to use microworms. Another two to three days after that and the fry should be big enough to accept baby brine. Live baby brine is the most popular thing to feed these guys. What's interesting is when you feed them, their bellies change color so you can make sure that all the fry are getting enough food. When you feed live baby brine, their bellies turn pink. I'm feeding dried foods in this tank so their bellies are brown. You need to feed them frequently, but keep the water really, really clean. For that reason, I always rear them on a bare bottom aquarium. This way I can use a small gauge siphon hose in order to suck out all the debris and detritus and see how well the fry are doing. You can see there are quite a lot of fry in this little two and a half gallon aquarium. I'm doing daily water changes and feeding two to three times a day for these guys and they are absolutely thriving. In a few weeks they'll color up a bit more and I'll be able to start sorting them by gender should I choose to. Now because rams can be difficult to sex, it's best in my opinion to buy a young group of six to eight specimens and allow them to pair up naturally rather than trying to buy a mature pair. This ensures that the fish that you're getting are not old and you have a really good chance of getting a pair. As you guys can see, German blue rams are absolutely stunning and wildly popular for a reason. They have a lot of charisma, they're very breedable, and those colors are absolutely striking. There's a reason they've been a popular choice in the aquarium hobby since they were discovered. As always, I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I've got a lot going on in the next few weeks and I'm excited to share it with you. As always, stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions.